Dave Ingram here. Um, yeah, the pandemic, it's, it's affecting us. It, it's affecting us, um, the benediction, obviously, because, uh, you know, we all live in different countries. Well, I say all. I, I'm here in Denmark. Um, three of the guys are in England, and the drummer, Gio, he's, uh, he's in Italy. So, uh, yeah, it is affecting us, and um, we just can't wait to get back into it. We really want to get back in and do some work, get some more gigs going on. We've, we've lost a year, basically. We, it's what's happened. The last gigs we played were uh, December. Um, after that, I got ill. I had to have an operation, and then, um, yeah, so I think the next gigs we play will be November. So it's like 11 months that we've lost. So, um, wow, that's, wow, thinking about it, that's a lot. But yeah, it's affected us, but we're going to get through it, and hopefully, uh, you know, people are still going to want to see us. Logo. Wow, that was years ago. Um, yeah, it was designed by a guy called Skinny, and um, I believe he's still he's still around, still doing stuff, still an artist. Um, yeah, he, he designed the logo and said, "This is you know what, what I can give you, the band." This is obviously this is before I joined. This is when Barney uh, Barney Greenway was still a member of the band uh, back in 1989, I believe it was, and. Um, over the years, it did change now and again on certain releases. Uh, I think that was to fit in, but I, I think it should have stayed the same. But uh, it's, you know, this is the return to Rubicon now with me getting back in the band. So, yeah, it, it's uh, definitely the uh, the old school Benediction, old school death metal logo. <laughs> Well, new music, not a lot actually, uh, besides the new Benediction album and the new uh, Hell, Frost and Fire album. That's something I'll talk about in a, a, a later thing. Um, but uh, you know, I, I listen to the old school stuff, such as uh, right now I've got almost everything by Celtic Frost on a playlist on my iPod, and I listen to that all the time. Um, old. Massacre, Old Entombed, yeah, uh, the newer stuff is great, there's nothing wrong with it, and I do listen to that on my radio show, uh, Metal Breakfast Radio, uh, it's online, it's free, you can download it, tune in, it's, it, you know, it's a, it's a laugh, it's a different type of radio show, but it's very much fun, it's fun for us, and yeah, it's, um, it's all about drinking beer, which is something I do, when, um, yeah, we, uh, during this pandemic, uh, that's a hobby for me. Also getting a few more like, tattoos here and there. Um, that's what I've been doing. And uh, I'm also going to be doing some more videos, not just this stuff, but also videos of, um, yeah, my own things, my own content. And um, I might even ask people to ask me questions and I'll do this like I'm doing now. But uh, I've got to have another hip operation. Um, I've already had my left one done I now need to have my right one done so um, I'll have some time off from work and um, I'll be have at least six maybe seven weeks where I'll be uh, uh, free to get a lot of stuff done including writing some new albums again I'll talk about those in a little while Sorry, um, how do we know when the song's finished, when it's ready? Um, well, the band, the, the musicians in the band, because uh, I'm not a musician, don't, don't rope me in with those people. Um, no, the, when they've made a song and they think it's finished, I will say, okay, let me take it and work on it with the lyrics. And sometimes I'll say, that's fine, it's perfect, don't change anything. Sometimes I'll say... Maybe we should add a bit there, maybe take that bit out and move it to the end, whatever. And um, yeah, well, we, we, we do that, and um, that's how we work. Sometimes the musicians, and again, don't rope me in with those people, um, 
they'll sometimes say, oh, well, maybe we need to extend this part so you'll have to write some more lyrics. And that has happened as well. So it, it's, a, it's always a work in progress until we all finally sign off on it. So um, it can take a while, but it's always worth it in the end, as you will hear when you listen to the new Benediction album. The scene in the 90s, is it as strong now as it was back then? I don't know. Not because I don't take notice of it, I do. Um, but it's so different now. So... Is it a strong? I think there was, a, you, you have to look at it from different points of view. Um, the, there's, today we have the internet and th things such as this can be done online. Before, it would take weeks. This is being done in one night and being sent it's less than a night. It's like a, 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 an hour. Um, but yeah, things like this, you have to go through the mail and you might not get there. You know, so the internet is a tool that we've all used to promote the bands, um, whichever bands they are. And over the years, it's just expanded, and so has the scene. And I think sometimes the, the scene feels stifled because there's so many, but if you actually stop and take stock of everything and listen to, to what's going on out there, there's a lot of really good bands. And I think it's, it's worth it, it's a good thing. It's a good thing you've got so much diversity and variety in the scene. And I'd love that. And so should you. Best or worst moments? Oh, there's been so many. Um, you can't really put uh, a, a point of finger at or put a flag into what's yeah. best. Stop it. What's best or worst? It's always uh, it's always been a good time, regardless. With Benediction, I mean, I'm talking about the first eight years I was in the band. Um, there were so many moments, so so many moments that were good, and they were bad as well. Uh, it's how things are, and um, we're human. That happens. Except me, I'm a time lord. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I said stop it. Um, but we. Um, and also in, including the, 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 well, obviously not the last 11 months because we haven't been able to do anything. But before that, prior to that, and the, the return to Rubicon, it's been fun. It's been great. We've had such a laugh together. And, um, yeah, that's going to continue. Absolutely. Um, and, um, yeah, there's going to be more gigs coming up. And I can't fucking wait for them. Yeah, metal fans are quite unique when with their love of uh, this genre uh, and, and all of its uh, you know subgenres that are contained within. Metal fans really do love it, and it, you don't see that with with other forms of music. You really don't. Uh, not not to this level of uh, intensity that uh, the, the love that people have for it. And uh, I'm quite proud to be a part of that. I really am, and I, I'm. I'm quite proud to have friends that are equally as nuts about this type of music as I am. I mean, okay, I like other genres of music, absolutely. But I would say metal, that's definitely my number one. Right, the radio show, the podcast. Um... That began back in 2008, so it's been going for 12 years now, yeah. Um, and, okay, it's these days it's pretty much on and off. I'm quite busy doing things. Uh, oh, there's my beer. I thought I'd lost it. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, that's better. You go back there and hide my beer. No, the, the, the podcast... Uh, Metal Breakfast Radio, it's been going for that long and it's a lot of fun. Like I just said before, 
It's uh, slightly different. We talk over songs, we give our opinions, we drink lots of that beer stuff and then um, get rather drunk. Um, it's fun. We enjoy it. And also the YouTube stuff. I've only done one video so far, and that was a couple of years ago. I'd really like to do some more, which I'm going to do during this, uh, um, well, the, the, with the virus thing, definitely. But during the time I have to have off because of having my uh, other hip operated on. So... Uh, be plenty of time then I'll get some videos done and if I can find an easy way of doing it I'll maybe keep doing them and um, just having a bit of a laugh doing it <laughs> it's the best thing I can do uh, well actually no this is the best thing I can do <sighs> luckily I have another one A, a five member group um, oh and I'm not allowed in it bollocks uh, I'm gonna be in it uh, so it'll be me on vocals of course and uh, guitar uh, Tom G warrior or Tom G Fisher actually as it is nowadays rather uh, on bass Steve Harris uh, from Iron Maiden uh, of course uh, I think on drums, ooh, that would be a toughie. That would definitely be a toughie. Uh, drums, I think I'd probably go for uh, Keith Moon. I quite like the way he plays, or played, because he passed away. Um, let's see, uh, a second guitarist or a keyboard player, or maybe a bit of both. Maybe um, Alex Lifeson or uh, Geddy Lee, because I'm sure Geddy Lee can play guitar as well. And he can also do keyboards. Uh, he's from, they're from Rush. And uh, so, uh, who was that? Uh, I think that's it. Wasn't that five? Oh, well, if not, then uh, we can have Ian Gill and he can just sweep the stage because I'm singing and not him. <laughs> and the, the name, the name. Oh, um, oh I don't know. I don't know, but maybe we could have Tony Iommi as well on guitar. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, we wouldn't have a keyboard player. We'd have Tony Iommi. Yeah, uh, and I, the name of the band, no idea off the top of my head. Okay, we'll just call it the top of my head. How about that? My top 10 metal albums of all time. Okay, I'll, I'll do it. It's, it's metal, so it's not just death metal. So that's good. Um, let me see. Uh, and it, it's not going to be just metal. All right. Um, I would say Black Sabbath, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. Bolt Thrower, this, Bolt Thrower for Victory. This is in no order, by the way. Uh, De La Soul, Three Feet High and Rising. Jethro Tull, um, Songs from the Wood. Rudimentary Peni, Cacophony, or even Death Church. Yeah. Uh, Iron Maiden, uh, Peace of Mind. Um, what other albums do I listen to? Um, oh, good grief. Celtic Frost, uh, to Megatherian. That's probably close to the top as well, that one. Um, I'd, I'd have to say uh, Entombed's clandestine album because that was uh, that was a strange one, different vocalist, and it, well, it was a drummer, but it wasn't the drummer's name on the album that was doing vocals. Uh, but yeah, I, I enjoyed that; I really did. It was a really good album. Um, who else do I listen to? Budgie, a band called Budgie, uh, Night Flight uh, the album there, and uh, one more. Um, good grief! Who on earth could I say that I, I listen to? Queens of the Stone Age and the album Era Vulgaris. There's my top 10. In no order, and I love each and every one of them. All right, well a big thanks to you for the, uh, the questions. Do I have anything to promote? You bet your ass I do. There, well, there's obviously Metal Breakfast Radio. We talked about that already. Um, check it out, metalbreakfastradio.com. Um, just look us up on Facebook. I, just search Metal Breakfast Radio on Facebook. You'll find us. There's also my band, Hell, Frost and Fire. Uh, the debut album will be coming out in a few months. Um, more on that then. 
There's also my band Echelon. I'm currently writing the third album with Roger Johansson. You know that guy, don't you? Um, so, uh, again, another few months. I'm also working on an album called, uh, well, by a band called Earth Sinner, our second album with Johnny Peterson. I think you all might know that guy as well. Uh, there's been some guest vocals done with Just Before Dawn once more. And um, what else am I doing? Oh, yeah, obviously there's the Benediction album. And um, we can't forget that. <laughs> um, and also, uh, one more album. It's uh, Down Among the Dead Men. That's a band I'm doing. We haven't got an album planned yet. We've done three already. We've got one more to, uh, to do. Well, not one more. We might do loads more. But um, we, we're going to do another one. But... That'll be later next year. So uh, that's all I've got for you. Thank you for the uh, questions. Cheers to everyone. And a uh, big thanks from my beer, from Rusty Mark 1, and Supreme Rusty Mark 2. Thanks again. Cheers. Ever forward.